So this guy was a trailblazer, a multifaceted character actor, a multifaceted uh, author, performer, athlete, changed the rules of how we looked at black uh, people, performers in his era. It can only be the classic Woody Strode. Now, Woody Strode, born Woodrow Wilson Woolwine Strode in L.A., June, tw- July 25th, 1914. Played uh, many, many parts uh, on TV and on the big screen. He was a football star and author. He was also a decathlete and football star. He was one of the first black American players in the NFL in the post-war era. After football, he went on to become a film actor. Well, he was nominated for Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor for his supporting role in Spartacus in 1960. Strode also served the U.S. Army Corps during World War II. Now, he was his grandf- grandmother was African-American and Cherokee. His parents were both from New Orleans. His uh, grandfather was an African-American. His grandmother was Greek. He attended Thomas Jefferson High School in Southeast L.A. and college at UCLA, where he's a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. His world-class decathlon capabilities were spearheaded by a 50-foot-plus shot put when the world record was 57 feet and a 6-foot-5 high jump. The world record at the time was 6-foot-10. I got a cultural education, major in history and education, he said in a 71 interview. Never used it, but I could walk into the White House with it now. Now, Strode uh, actually was a figure model. model. He posed for a nude portrait, part of Hubert uh, Stowitz's acclaimed exhibition of athletic portraits shown at the 36th Berlin Olympics, although the inclusion of black and Jewish athletes caused the Nazis to close the exhibit. Now, Strode, Kenny Washington, Jackie Robinson starred on the undefeated 1939 UCLA Bruins football team, in which they made up three of the four backfield players. They became famous nationally as the Gold Dust Gang. Along with Roy, Roy, Ray Bartlett, there were four black Americans playing for the Bruins, while only a few dozen uh, at all played on other college teams. He played eventual conference and Helms National Champion USC to a scoreless tie with those championships and a 1940 Rose Bowl on the line. It was the first UCLA-USC rivalry football game with national implications. Now, Strode made his first appearance on the big screen in Sundown in 1941, playing a native policeman. He had a small role in Star Spangled Rhythm in 42 as a chauffeur of Rochester, Edward Anderson, and could be glimpsed in No Time for Love. Now, <clears throat> when World War II broke out, Strode was playing for the Hollywood Bears in the PCPFL, the Pacific Coast League. He was drafted at 27 and soon joined the United States Army Air Corps and spent the war unloading bombs in Guam and the Marianas, as well as playing on the Army football team at March Field in Riverside, California. After the war, he worked on serving subpoenas and escorting prisoners for the L.A. County District Attorney's Office. Strode and Kenny Washington were two of the first African Americans to play in major college programs and later the modern NFL, along with Marion Motley and Bill Willis, who signed with the Contemporary Riven All-America Football Conference, playing for the L.A. Rams in 1946. No black men had played the NFL from 33 to 46. UCLA teammate Robinson would go on to break the color barrier in Major League Baseball. In fact, Robinson, Strode, and Washington had all played in the semi-pro PCPFL, uh, the Pacific Coast Professional Football League, earlier in the decade. Now, went out in the road with the team. Strode has his first experience with racism, something he wasn't aware of growing up in L.A. We were unconscious of color. We used to sit in the best seats at the Coconut Grove, which was a nightclub in the Ambassador Hotel, listening to Donald Nova sing. If someone said, there's a Negro over there, it was just an apt as someone to turn around and say, where? He also said on the Pacific Coast, there wasn't anything we couldn't do. As we got out of the L.A. area, we found these racial tensions. Hell, we thought we were white. In 48, he signed with the Dodgers of the AAFC and was released before the season started, whereupon he joined the Calgary Stampeders of the Western Interprovincial uh, Interprovincial Football Union in Canada, where he's a member of Calgary's 1948 Grey Cup title team, before retiring uh, due to injury in 49. He he had to retire because he broke two ribs and a shoulder. It was like I had fought Joe Lewis, he recalled. Now, in 41... Strobe had dabbled for several months in pro wrestling. Following the end of his football career in 49, he returned to wrestling part-time between acting jobs until 62, wrestling the likes of Gorgeous George. In 52, Strode wrestled wrestled almost every week from August 52 to December 52 in different cities in California. He was Brazil as the Pacific Coast Heavyweight Wrestling Champion and the Pacific Coast Negro Heavyweight Wrestling Champion in 62. He later teed up with 
Now, with the 50s upon us, upon us, we knew something was going to happen in his life. Strode's acting career was reactivated when producer Walter Mirsch spotted him wrestling and cast him as the African warrior in The Lion Hunters, 1951, one of the Bamba, The Jungle Boy series. They wanted him to shave his head. He was reluctant until they offered him 500 a week. I said, all right, where are the pluckers? Then Strode realized I was out in the world market with a bald head, trapped for life, finally became a way of life. He had roles in The Bridal Gorilla, African Treasure, in an episode of Dangerous Assignment, Caribbean, and Androses in a line, playing the line. The toughest job I ever had, he said later. Strode was in City Beneath the Sea, directed by Bud uh, Bo Teichter and the Royal African Rifles. Also appeared in several episodes of the television series Romero of the Jungle, where he portrayed an African warrior. Strode was a gladiator in Demetrius and the Gladiators, 1954, and the Jungle Leaders in 54, a Jungle Jim film. He could be seen in The Gambler from Natchez in 54, Jungle Gents, and a Bowery Boys movie set in Africa, and, of course, the Paul Newman Silver Chalice. He was also in a TV adaptation of Mandrake the Mag Magician, a pilot for a series that was not picked up, and had small parts in Son of Sinbad, Soldiers of Fortune, and Baruba, a Japanese film set in Africa. He also once appeared on Johnny Will Smiler's syndicated television series, Jungle Jim, and it was an episode of Private Secretary. Now, Cecil B. DeMille eventually cast him in a very... Uh, you know, a pivotal uh, role in the Ten Commandments as a slave at $500 a week for five weeks. They were unable to find anyone to play the Ethiopian king, so Strode was given that role too. You have to look closely. He had a support in Tarzan's Fight for Life in a small part, part in a Buccaneer. In 59, he portrayed the conflicted, some say cowardly, Private Franklin in Port Drop Hill, which brought him critical acclaim. He called it the first dramatic thing that I had done. He also guest starred on The Man from Blackhawk in 1960. So from professional athlete all the way into good supporting roles. But this is where it got interesting. Spar uh, Strode was next cast in Spartacus as the Ethiopian gladiator Draba in which he was to fight Spartacus, played by Kirk Douglas, to the debt. Draba wins the contest, but instead of killing Spartacus, he attacks the Roman military commander who paid for the fight. He, he's killed and his death sparks a gladiator rebellion. You don't want to know my name. I don't want to know yours. Strode had an excellent support part to the last voyage, 1960, playing an heroic stoker, though he was only billed fifth. Now, we, while making Pork Chop Hill, he became a close friend of director John Ford. Ford gave Strode the title role, the role in Sergeant Rutledge as a member of the Knight Cavalry, who was greatly admired by the other black soldiers and the unit, and is falsely accused of rape and murder of a white woman. Now, the big studios wanted an actor like Cindy Poitier or Haley Byerfonte, recalled Strode, and this is not being facetious, but Mr. Ford defended me. I don't know that was, that is going on. He, sell, he said, well, there's not enough, uh, uh, tough enough to do I want Sergeant, Sergeant Rutledge uh, to be. Uh, very, very athletic. He was always own stuntman as well. Now, that was a classic, he later said. It had dignity. John Ford put classic words in my mouth. You never seen a Negro come off a mountain like John Wayne before. I had the greatest glory hallelujah ride across the Pecos River that any black man had ever had on the screen. And I did it myself. I carried a whole black race across that river. Now, Strode had difficulty maintaining momentum in these roles. He was in the sins of Rachel Cade and guest starred twice in Ride, playing an Australian Aboriginal in one episode and a Buffalo Soldier in the other. Ford used them again in two row road together in 62, but it was only a small part as an Indian. He did have a bigger role in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance for Ford, playing Pompey, John Wayne's hired hand. In the film, Strode's character recites the Declaration of Independence, but apologized for getting the phrase, all men are created equal, a poignant, a poignant line for the 62 audience. Pompey Strode physically carries and thereby saves a drunken, suicidal John Wayne from his burning home. Now, in 63... He was cast opposite Jock Mahoney's Tarzan as both the dying leader of an unnamed Asian country and that leader's unsavory brother, Khan, in Tarzan's Three Challenges. He also guest starred in The Lieutenant, The Farmer's Daughter, Daniel Boone, and had roles in the features Genghis Khan and Seven Women, the later last film he made for Ford. Strode was very close to the director. He treated me like a son, says Strode. I had a certain amount of crudeness that went back a hundred years, and that's what he liked. So his connection with Ford and all these great uh, performances really, really made him a household name. Uh, he eventually uh, appeared uh, uh, on a lot of shows, but 
And during Ford's declining years, Strode also spent four months sleeping on director's floor as his caregiver and was later president at Ford's death. And Strode said in published reports he, he always considered uh, Ford like a father figure for his obvious reasons. Like in the ninth, late 1960s, he appeared in several episodes of the Ron Ely Tarzan television series. Strode's other television work including the role of the Grand Mogul in the Batman episodes Marsha Queen of Diamonds and Marsha Scheme of Diamonds. Now, Strode eventually landed a major starring role as an expert archer and soldier of fortune in a 66 Western The Professionals. His name was the only one of the four professionals that was left off the movie poster. Nevertheless, the film was a major box office success that again reestablished him as a recognizable star. In 67, he attempted to produce his own film, The Story of the Ten Cavalry, but it was not made. He eventually based himself in Europe from 68 to 71. Now, his 1968 starring role as a thinly disguised Patrice uh, Lum, Lumama in Sidito Alla Sodestra, released in the U.S. as Black Jesus, garnered Strode a great deal of press at the time, but the film was largely forgotten in 2023. He also played an Indian in Shalako and played a gunslinger in the opening sequence of Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West. He decided to stay in Europe. I had five pairs of blue jeans. I was lonely and I didn't speak the language, he said. But the producers answered, not necessary. You ride horses. Now, Strode was in Shea in 69 and sported Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer and Boot Hill, also 69, shot in Italy. He stayed in Europe to make another Western, The Unholy Four, in 1970, and went back to Hollywood to do a TV movie breakout and did two Western, The Deserter, also known as The Devil's Backbone, and The Gatling Gun. The scripts of these were variable, but Strode later said, me, I didn't care. If the money was right, I'd play Mickey Mouse. Now, Strode went back to Europe to make Scipio the African and did some more Westerns. The Last Rebel in 71, The Revengers in 72. And he later said he salary Italy went up to get this 10000 a week. He also did The Italian Connection in 72, which was paid 150000 Race is not a factor in the world market, he said in 81. I once played a part written for an Irish prize fighter. I've done everything but play an Anglo-Saxon. I'd do that if I could. I'd play a Viking with blue contact lenses and a long wig if I could. My dream is to play a Mexican bandit in the international market. Now, he was also in Key West, Load Guns, The Manhunter, We Are No Angels, Winterhawk, Kioma, Episodes of The Quest and How the West Was Won, Oil, Margalina, Outside Man, Kingdom of the Spiders, Cowboy San, Revengers, Jaguar Lives, and the episode of Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Now, Strode later appearances including Cuba Crossing, The Dukes of Hazard, Scream, Fantasy Island, Vigilante, Invaders of the Lost Gold, Angkor, Cambodia Express, The Black Stanley Returns, The Violent Breed, Jungle Warriors, The Cockle Club, The Final Executioner, Lust in the Dust, On Fire, and A Gathering of Old uh, Men. So he was getting a lot of roles in B-level stuff. Now, Strode eventually showed up in Storyville and Posse in the early 90s, working with director Mary Van Peebles. His last film was The Quick and the Dead, which shared, uh, starred Sharon Stone, Hackman, DiCaprio, and Crow. <coughs> the closing credits dedicate the film to Strode, who died shortly before its release. Now, in 1980, Strode was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame. In 2021, he was inducted into all the great Westerners of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Now, his first wife was Princess Lucolana Caliola, a.k.a. Luana Strode, a distant relative of uh, Lulu Caliani, the last queen of Hawaii. You would have thought it was marrying Lana Turner, the way the whites in Hollywood acted, he later said. With her, he had two children, television director Kalai and her daughter June. They were married until her death in 1980 from Parkinson's. In 82, at the age of 68, he was 35-year-old. Uh, Tina Thompson, and he remained married until his death of lung cancer on December 31st, 1994, in Glendora, California, age 80. He is buried at the Riverside National Cemetery in Riverside, California. Now, uh, Strode was a dedicated martial artist as well, under the direction of Flynn Glanders, and he had of uh, Shashindo Kenpo. Now, Sheriff Woody of the Toy Story series, animated films, is named after Strode as was the recurring character of the Santa Barbara Corner in the television series Psych. Now, he was part of the, also part of the California Cauliflower Alley Club, winning the Iron Mike Mazurecki Award in 1990. Strode's look, uh, and this may not be as, as aware to uh, Americans as Canadians, there are many black people in eastern Canada that have Aboriginal blood. 
because usually with the black communities and the Aboriginal communities, we do business with each other, work together, and it was a lot of crossover because we weren't hanging out with some of the white communities really until the 1960s or the 70s. But what does is, interest me about this guy? All the all the parts he did, he left his own style. He wasn't Poitier, he wasn't Belafonte, he wasn't uh, you know like the modern black actors. There was you you didn't look at him as like black or Aboriginal. But his autobiography, Gold Dust, if you can find a copy of it, tells about how he looked at life, and it's quite interesting. Now, let's put this in perspective. He was a football star. He was a stuntman. He was a character actor. He was a pro wrestler. Uh, he was a figure model. He was, a like I said, a multinational star. Good fan, friend of John Ford. A character actor in all the big westerns. He worked with the top actors of all time. Played two so good he played two roles in the Ten Commandments. But to me, when I saw him in Spartacus, I didn't know what Woody Strode was. A little story about Spartacus. If you've never watched it before, where they're having, you know, I want to fight to the death, eh? And there's already one battle that went on, I think. Oh my god, what's the character? Is that John Ireland, I think? Won the first battle. But the second battle, like uh, Douglas and Strode are looking back at each other. He didn't have to say a word. Now, you know he had every opportunity to escape with his life, and he didn't want to. In that moment, was he human again? Because maybe it was a gladiator that was uh, uh, murdering him, you know. But it's kind of weird about Spartacus. Uh, uh, gladiator, when he referred to the Spaniard in Spartacus, technically... The Spaniard is the Russell Crowe character, Gladiator. So Woody Strode and the Quick and the Dead as well, how many generations knew Woody Strode? Some people wouldn't recognize his name, and but the, the grandmother, grandfather, the women liked him, by the way. And he was also a gay icon because a lot of the gay people back in the day liked his look. And he was a lot of the Tarzan movies and like what they call the Sandal Epics or what they call Swashbuckling. Woody Strode, to me, is the most underrated character actor in the history of Hollywood, not only because of his personality and his intelligence, you couldn't take your eyes off him because he was pure. When he said something, you listened and you were just waiting for him to say something. It would have been great if he would have done it in like a contract with NBC Universal to do a kind of like a, a, a chocolate Western, Woody Strode and maybe an Elliot Gould or, or, you know, Jeff Daniels or whatever later on you know, being Sheriff's Sheriff's in a small town. And he could do comedy as well. Like I said, I've seen him in different comedy roles. But The Quick and the Dead, Spartacus, everything else, I mean, he's, he's a connection to uh, six degrees of separation with Woody Strode. And it's my honor doing a podcast on Woody because I should have done it a while ago, but he came to mind because I saw the scene of Spartacus again. And if you have a chance to see, see the scene where you should have got an Oscar for it, I mean, in my personal opinion, it is so much of the 1960s method. And he wasn't a method actor. But like when he, he turned, he saves Kirk Douglas and turns against his captors. It's like a lion escapes from the cage and attacks the guy with the whip. And like I said, it was a symbol of black freedom. And, you know, he never considered himself black. He kept himself multi multiracial, multiracial, you know, being part Aboriginal. But like I said, um, I don't know. Every time he was on the screen, man, uh, it's like it's like an old friend. Hey, Woody Strode's back. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our Vintage Western podcast, let us know with a like, comment, a subscribe, or share. Tell us about your favorite memory or memory of Woody Strode. But, again, me and Spartacus, boys, seeing it at a drive-in when I was like, I don't know, 1973, it was eight years old. I asked Dad, who's that? Oh, that's, that's Woody Strode. It's one of the best actors of all time. <laughs> For that five minutes, he outacted our Kirk Douglas. Take care and have a safe week. Bye.